Okay, welcome back. And here I have Sonic Mayhem's QB106. This is going to be the last video it's in because it's going back to LA to make music. And you may ask, why have I kept it so long? Well, first of all, uh, we had to bring it back from NAMM because it actually had a little issue with the bender that needed to be resolved. And that was kind of a Juno 106 hardware problem that I ended up having to fix. Uh, don't know how I got past this, but we noticed it at the show, and I said to, I said to Sonic Mayhem, well, I, I, I really ought to fix this before you take it. So I brought it back, and of course, having got it back, having fixed it, there we were working on version 2, and I said to him, well, why don't we just wait till version 2 is shipping, and then you can have it, have it in its entirety and just start making music with all the cool new features of version 2. And he said, okay, so many months later, it's been more than we'd like, but we got him all done. Uh, version 2 is now released. In fact, we're all the way up to version 2.01. And uh, here it is on Kiwi106.com. That's Kiwi-106.com. Easy to get to. And as you can see, it's the first thing that you're going to see on the web page. Uh, and you can download the Windows and the Mac version. And we're up to 2.01 because we had a couple of little extra fixes and a couple of little extra goodies wedged in there just in the final. Just actually just posted it today. Um, when you, the day that we're making this video is the day that we actually released it. 7-17, is that right? No, 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 actually this one was um, July 22nd, 2015. 7-17 was the original post. Anyway, I'm digressing. So let's turn on Sonic Mayhem's machine. And it's a 1.03. It's running version 1.03. I haven't even updated it yet. So we're going to use it as an example machine. So I, I've got here an M-Audio Uno. Great little interface, USB interface, they're affordable and whatnot. They run fantastic on Windows. They run great on Mac. Uh, again, we've had a couple of reports of them being flaky on Yosemite because of the drivers, and I'm not 100% sure uh, what's the status of that right now. All I can say is if you have an Uno, use Windows to do the update if you're going to update. All right, so let's just do that. So in to in and out to out. Straightforward and simple. I'm going to move this out of the way now. Um, I've already downloaded the editor and I actually already installed it. So it's created for me on the desktop a desktop icon to launch the editor. So it's going to move this aside. Where's that guy? Where's that desktop icon? Ah, here it is. Yeah, here it is. Uh huh. Okay. Moving this, moving that. There it is. Double click on that guy. Okay, so it's opening, and 2.01, July 22nd, 2015, uh, and you'll see the first thing it says is it cannot find the Kiwi 106, and the reason it can't is because this is a 1.03 Kiwi 106. It uses a different manufacturer code, in fact, than the version 2. So we're going to get the standard here, have an instructional guide, the quick start help guide, shows you how to do the update if, in fact, you're now panicking. But uh, anyway... Uh, first thing it tells you is to cancel all. And after you've done the canceling all, the editor will initialize up just like this. And as it's initializing, you'll get a little whirly circle. Uh, at least if you're using it on Windows 7. And right now it's uh, initializing and it's going to go to a knit patch. And it will also tell us that it failed to find a connected Kiwi 106. So if I uh, scan now for status, uh, one more time, it's actually telling me, okay, look, uh, the bootloader is 1.00, so you can see right here, and the main program, here, let me just move the mouse, I'm going to move the mouse here as a as pointer, bootloader is 1.00, uh, main program is 1.03, and the status is update the boot and program, that's what it says to do. Now, I've explained this in the manual, and the manual is available right here from the, you know, the Visex Editor's User's Guide. Um, but uh, basically you have two pieces to the firmware. One is the bootloader and the other is the program. And the two of them work together. The bootloader you can think of as the guy who handles the deliveries. He's the one who takes all the incoming new system updates and sets them up and activates them. So as long as he's cool, uh, you can mess up the second download. You can cancel it halfway or whatever. That won't be a problem because the bootloader is intact. He'll still be there when you do the boot up. Okay, I'm just explaining all this in case you want to have a look at why this is the case. So we will begin the update wizard. And the first thing it wants us to do is select the interface we're going to use. And we have to choose the individual port. So here it is right here. USB Uno MIDI interface. I'm not checking use available MIDI ports. Usually the program 
in normal mode will actually automatically select the ports and detect the instrument. But this is a special case. In this case, we want to actually choose the specific port, the MIDI output we're sending the update to. And no auto detection involved in that. So we've done that now, and we're ready for the next step. And it wants us to reboot in load mode for the bootloader update. And as you can see in the uh, revised documentation, uh, we actually have some synth graphics stuff here. And look, well, does that look familiar too? This part of the synth graphics overlay. And this, this in fact, is Sonic Mayhem's QB106 with its custom button colors in there. As if that wasn't confusing enough, it's also uh, colored differently than your Juno. But that's how it works when you have a custom synth. So we power it off and restart it. And hey, look at those hands. That looks familiar. Um, we restart it with uh, the load button pressed down, but of course it's octave range on the synth graphics. So it's off. Now I'm pressing it down, and now it's on. And if you see that, that's the only LED that's illuminated right now. Let me turn this off. See that? The only LED illuminated right now is that one lone guy above the load button or the octave range if you're running an overlay. Uh, okay, yeah, this synth graphics overlay, by the way, is a production prototype. If you want to order one, uh, the production run hasn't happened yet, but it will be happening soon. I know that uh, Jamie at Synth Graphics is working on that right now. This is one that I actually produced here in my town uh, using my technology, uh, but using the synth graphics graphics. Uh, and of course, I tweaked them up to match the, the panel and stuff exactly. So this is cool. It's kind of a joint collaboration here. These files went back to synth graphics, so you're going to get the benefit of the work I put in. Uh, ready for the next step? Yes, we are. And the next step is transmit the bootloader update. And the bootloader update, I've got two red buttons here. There's one you can choose. There's OR in the middle. So there's one OR the other. This one here will transmit the V2.0 bootloader, and the one on the left does that. Uh, that's automatic, hardwired to that particular bootloader. Uh, here is an option to choose and transmit a different boot file. And that's not for the current version, obviously, but that's maybe if, let's say, uh, the bootloader gets updated three more times and the editor doesn't get updated at all, uh, and the updates are just supplied by Kiwi Technics, you can get them from Kiwi Technics and then choose to open them, as you can see. If you actually click this one, I can do it, it won't be any harm. It actually opens up and asks, asks me uh, w which file do you want to send. And I can, I can put any conceivable file I wanted in there. So that's what that is about. We're not going to choose that. I'm just going to transmit the standard V2.0 bootloader. Like that. And take a look over here. You'll see. Wow, that was fast. Did you see that? Blink, 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 blink. Over here and then done. It says transmitted right here. So we're ready for the next step. Uh, we want to reboot again, only this time we're going to do it in load mode again, holding down that button, let it go. We're now ready for the program update, which is the big one. This one takes a little while, but it's, uh, it's the main program. So ready for the next step? Well, we're already in great shape because the bootloader transferred without a problem. And as you can see, it's in load mode, so everybody's happy. Uh, and we got the same two button choices. I'm just going to choose to transmit the V2.01 program that's included with this package. And now we got a little bit of a walking going on here. Uh, here on the synth, if you take a look, uh, you'll see that it's actually doing the old 123, 123 walking synth lights. And that's because it is downloading. And over here, the editor itself is showing you that it is in the process of spooling the information out to the driver, which is then going out to the instrument. And so here it is. Now, how long is this going to take? Eh, well, it's doing it as fast as it can, believe it or not, within safety margin. So um, what we're actually looking at here is it's going to just keep on going for probably another, I don't know, 30 seconds maybe, uh, before it terminates. So I just wanted to uh, maybe take a moment to explain We've got some really, really cool stuff going on in the manual. Uh, I'll make a commercial for that. Uh, so I'm just going to launch it, the Visex Editor's User's Guide, like so. We can do that without any harm. And uh, just, just have a look here. No, still transmitting. Just have a look here. This is a, a big... Oh, no, it's maximized. One second. Minimize and... Um, we've got a lot. It's got it's got an introduction here comparing the Juno 106 with the Kiwi 106, 
it uh, goes into detail on the individual sections. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, you can actually see, uh, you'll learn a lot about uh, how things work, uh, including the expanded features and so on and so forth. Uh, and we're still transmitting. Didn't want to miss the magic moment when that uh, green LED, ah, there it is. <laughs> okay, great. So that's transmitted, and I'm taking a look here, and you'll see the only light that's on is the one over the arpeggiator on-off. Uh, but, of course, that will be the save button on a unoverlaid Juno 106. So, uh, what's the next step? Let's see. Ready for the next step? Here we go. Turn off the Kiwi 106 and turn it on again. All right, with no buttons down. So turn the thing on off, turn it on. Two, oh, yeah, two, oh. It doesn't give me the third digit, but that's that's quite all right. Two, oh, one is what it is. And we'll scan the firmware level to complete the process. And it detected it. It's successful. It says OK. And if you take a look here, it says bootloader is 2.0. Main program is 2.01. Uh, build number is 1. And it says status OK. No updates required. Uh, so at this point, we are actually ready to start doing some stuff. Uh, so uh, how do we go about that? Well, we could say file new. And we could create a new upload set. Or we could actually, I might as well show you this, open uh, here inside my Kiwi Technics Kiwi 106, I actually have uh, a, there's a file called Syntegrator May 21st, and that's actually included in the installation. And it's all the Syntegrator patches that we developed for version 1.03. Uh, and, okay, it's kind of unofficial. Uh, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not what I'd call polished or whatnot, uh, but it has some gems in there, some good ones that we came up with along the way. Things like Rom Sawyer, and uh, Van Heflin, and Subdivided, and a bunch of other cool ones. Housefly, uh, the 80s Polymaster, Diabolik, the New Boy Army patch, which is, does a really good poly mode. Um, anyway, uh, or poly mode. No, no, memory mode. Is it memory mode? Anyway, there we go. Yeah, poly mode it was, of course. So, um, I'm, I'm ranting, but this is it. We've now updated this to version 2.01, and uh, it's now ready to go to Sonic Mayhem. So there you go.